biohackers love stacking. Stacking products, technology, practices, cold, hot, you name it. But how do you stack these? And what supplements are best to stack? Welcome back to another episode of Don't Look Up, where we ask you to look up. Today, we're diving in deeply into the science of various supplements that you take probably on a regular basis. NAD, methylene blue, cordycepin, and more. Let's get into it. Is it bad to take too many supplements at once? Can this cancel each other out or something? This is actually quite common, and it's a really good question because there are many people out there that are taking a huge number of supplements. I gave a lecture about five years ago to an audience of biohackers, actually, and I asked the audience, how many people in this audience are taking supplements? And about 95% of people raised their hands. Then I asked a separate question, the next question, which was, how many people in this audience are taking supplementation that's directed to deficiencies and toxicities that they've measured in their system? And only about 5% of people raised their hand. Now, things have changed. More people are actually measuring now. But the problem is that there's so many supplements out there that we all can take. And I get tantalized by these things too. I'm like, wow, this is a great combination. Well, this is what sounds awesome. But in essence, you want to be taking a base stack that's focused on what you actually need. What are you deficient in? What do you have overabundance in that you need to come down on? What hormone balance do you need? This is the most foundational aspect of supplementation because you can run into trouble. You can run into trouble where you're taking one thing that has a interaction with something else, for example. Like you might be taking something that enhances the GABA system, but then taking something that actually decreases the GABA system at the same time. A good example of this would be something like ashwagandha and then St. John's wort, for example, because ashwagandha is gonna modulate the GABA system in a positive way, where St. John's wort is gonna actually prevent GABA from binding on the receptor. So you have to be very careful. And there are great ways to look at this now, but in essence, when I'm working with somebody, the goal is to find foundational supplements that they need and then add on top of that. And that's the key to do this, is that do it in this intentional way rather than just finding things on the internet that sound cool. Next question, how do you even know if your stack is doing anything? When you're stacking things together, go slowly. Do not start everything at once. It's not a good idea because you don't know what's helping you. If you start five things at once, you have no idea which of those supplements is helping you. In the reverse, if you take five things at once and something makes you feel terrible, you'll have no idea which of those supplements or technologies or practices, whatever you're doing, is actually causing the detrimental effect. So my emphasis to you is to go slowly with your stacks. Start one, then a week or two start another, and a week or two start something else, and then define your periods here. If you have ways to track, that's a fantastic way to do it. So if you have like an aura ring, for example, as I do, or whoop or something like that, you can track your sleep, you can track your HRV, you can track your stress levels, your VO2. I mean, everything you can track now is pretty amazing. When you're going to stop a stack, for example, you also oftentimes want to wean that stack off depending on the stack as well. But the most important part of it is to slowly bring things together and not just batter yourself with five different supplements, practices, technologies. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and said, doc, I feel like crap. And they tell me their supplement list and they started everything within a month. And it's impossible to know what's happening and what's causing the issue, right? So you have to peel things off. Usually you want to start off with zero or as close to zero as you can and then slowly increase over time. So stack mindfully, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to build a longevity stack but not spend a million dollars. What are the top three non-negotiables? Number one, test. Number two, test. Number three, do not guess. I emphasize this so strongly because what you need most is what you're deficient in or toxic in to help get rid of the toxicity. That is the key. If you're starting with all the fancy things, you are missing the foundational biology that's required for you to have longevity and to really have that stack that matters. Before you get fancy, please focus on testing. Do not guess you test. Check your vitamins, your minerals, your nutrients, your cofactors. Check your antioxidant status, your gut, your neurotransmitters, your hormones. Supplement what you need. That will get you 90% of the way there. Does stacking actually help your mitochondria or is it just expensive pee? <laughs> this is a very good question. And from some of my conventional colleagues, this is a common refrain. Taking a multivitamin is just making expensive pee. And I have to say and call bullshit here. We know that vitamin, mineral, nutrient deficiencies increase as we get older. Hands down, this is well described. And we know now from several studies that multivitamins can improve cognitive function in patients with mild cognitive impairment, even with Alzheimer's, just taking a multivitamin. And so we know that it's not just expensive pee, but, and here's a but, 
the quality of your supplements matter. If you're taking a Flintstone vitamin from Costco, first taking a high brand supplement from a reputable company that has third party testing and third party testing means that it doesn't have anything that's contaminating it, that's th at the dose is correct and things like that. That's a very different type of supplement than if you're taking your multivitamin from Costco in a big box store with Flintstones and, and maybe it just tastes like sugar. Then yes, at that point, it probably is just expensive pee and not that expensive, it's cheap, but you get what I mean. So supplement quality really matters here. When you're thinking about how you're going to stack things together in the mitochondria or for any process, you wanna get high quality stuff, third-party testing, reputable brands. And this is a big one, do not buy your supplements off of Amazon. Yes, I said it. I know many of you buy supplements off of Amazon, but the problem with that is that you don't know what you're getting. There have been millions of dollars worth of counterfeit supplements sold on Amazon. And I know this from companies directly telling me what happened. And so be very careful. I know it's a pain in the ass, but going to the companies themselves and buying the supplements directly is the way to do it under most circumstances. I mean, for example, at Transcriptions, our quality is as pharmaceutical grade as possible to give you the best stuff possible. I'm a clinician. There's four other docs on the team and clinicians on the team. We care about what's going into our bodies. We care about what's going into the bodies of our patients, of our families. And most supplement companies, they have to self-regulate, meaning there's, there's no actual law that says that you have to test anything that you make. So be super careful what you're getting on Amazon, not just the cheapest thing out there overall. And so when it comes to stacking things together, stack quality supplements together, do it in an intentional way, meaning slowly don't just increase everything all at the same time. But then yes, yeah, support your mitochondria, support things by improving energy production, detoxification. My favorite here is gonna be methylene blue because methylene blue is a redox cycler. It increases energy, it increases detox. It helps overall with the efficiency of the mitochondria itself. And so in my estimation, Methylene blue is one of my favorite from a longevity mitochondrial support perspective, and your pee will be blue. So it won't be expensive, but it will be blue. So anyway, so when you're thinking about this, high quality, stack slowly, and try some methylene blue. Okay, dumb question, maybe. But can I take NAD plus and cordyceptin together, or will that mess stuff up? NAD has become the universal everybody loves supplement these days. I have a little bit more of a nuance when it comes to NAD supplementation overall, but for the most part, yes, our NAD levels do go down as we get older. NAD, why do we need it? It donates electrons to the first complex in the mitochondria, and it's the most important complex of the four to help donate electrons and help you make more energy. If your NAD levels are low, you may not be making as much energy as you could. So supplementing with NAD can be very helpful, but it's almost like a band-aid on the process in the sense of why is your mitochondria not working very well? And so it can be helpful but it may not be the answer over the long term. Stacking it with cordyceptin is extremely interesting. Cordyceptin from our immune. Cordyceptin is our high potency extract of the cordyceps mushroom that is an immune system modulator. It decreases inflammation. It is an anti-infective. It has potential roles in allergy, asthma, gut microbiota issues, maybe even cancer overall. And so it's a fantastic adaptogen to work on mitochondrial support. So in essence, it is working on the mitochondria just like NED to help support it. And so, yes, I think you can stack them together. In essence, the cordyceptin, because it works like adenosine, which is, has many roles in the body, including as a neurotransmitter that helps make us feel more sleepy. Taking cordyceptin at night is typically the way to do it, the tromine at night, and having your NAD in the morning, which is gonna give you more energy. It's always important to go back to first principles. Why are you taking NAD? Why are you taking cordyceptin? What can you be doing from a diet, lifestyle, behavior perspective, to truly optimize your mitochondrial function. Because in the end, that's what we want, right? We want the capacity to have mitochondria that are humming along. And if we're NAD deficient, if we're having mitochondrial stress, but in essence, mind your mitochondria. Cellular medicine is mitochondrial medicine. And that's what we care about at our nonprofit, Health Optimization Medicine and Practice, Home Hope for short, that's training practitioners on how to optimize health. And the cellular health aspect, the actual getting down deep into the cells is where it's at. Is there a best time to take stuff like NAD boosters plus methylene blue, or just pop it all in in the AM and pray? <laughs> in general, NAD booster is gonna give you energy. Methylene blue is gonna give you energy as well. So typically going to use it in the mornings or maybe the early afternoons. I often dose methylene blue about eight o'clock in the morning, and then maybe about one or two o'clock in the afternoon as a second dose. The half-life of methylene blue is about four to six hours. And as a result of that, you have the capacity to have that second dose in the early afternoon. If you take it too close to bed, some people can be, kind of energized and have a hard time sleeping. It's not a stimulant per se, but some people can still feel enough stimulation that makes it harder for them to go to bed. However, there are a group of people that will take methylene blue before they go to bed to help them sleep better. And sleep is a very highly metabolic process, a detoxification process. And so having methylene blue on board in the evenings can be helpful in some people, but not everybody, and that's not the way I would start it.
NAD, same thing. NAD is going to increase energy. So if you're going to take it, usually take it in the morning overall. Next question, does Methylene Blue mess with other supplements? I'm taking it with seven other things. So Methylene Blue is a fantastic mitochondrial optimizer. It helps with energy, it helps with detox, energy and resilience, which is pretty awesome overall. If you're taking it with seven other things, you kind of want to know what those seven other things are. In essence, if you're taking it with a lot of antioxidants, you might decrease the capacity for Methylene Blue to do what it needs to do. So in essence, I typically have people break apart when they're taking Methylene Blue and lots of antioxidants like Vitamin C, for example. Vitamin C can neutralize Methylene Blue and change it to a different color, which makes it less potent in the body overall. Vitamin C is also fantastic, right? So you want to have a balance of these. Vitamin C, apart from Methylene Blue, is usually what I recommend overall. So I, what I do recommend for Methylene Blue is not to take it with a lot of antioxidants. That's the biggest thing. Knowing that you might deplete the capacity for Methylene Blue to do what it does best, which is to redox cycle, meaning that energy production and then detoxification. So if you give too many antioxidants at the same time with Methylene Blue, there's a theoretical capacity that you won't be able to have as much antioxidant capacity of the Methylene Blue itself. How do you stack Methylene Blue with Cordycepin? This is one of my favorite stacks for inflammatory resport, energy production, detoxification, deep sleep, and so many other things. Most of my patients that have chronic complex medical illness, chronic inflammation, mitochondrial stress, I will put them on Methylene Blue during the day and Cordycepin from Tromune at night. Methylene Blue, as mentioned, fantastic redox cycler, energy production, detoxification. The key is very low doses though. Starting off at four or eight milligrams, increasing the dose every three to five days till you find a dose that's working well and supporting you. More energy, more focus, less pain, less inflammation, less brain fog, and other things like that. And then the cordycepin from our tromune, the extract of the cordyceps mushroom, increases deep sleep, decreases inflammation. You take it at night, it's immune system modulator, so you're going to have this immune system capacity that's so much more regulated than you probably have already. This combination is my go-to stack for people that are coming in with inflammation and that need mitochondrial support. During the day, methylene blue. At night, cordycepin. So our methylene blue product that we use, Just Blue, and our cordycepin product is Tromune. So this combination is a mainstay for what I do. Now, from a cycling perspective, you do wanna cycle cordycepin if you're taking it regularly. At least one week out of every month, you wanna stop it if you can. Methylene blue, it depends on why you're taking it. If you're taking it for severe mitochondrial issues, you may not be able to cycle it. As long as it's low dose, four, eight, 16 milligrams, these are very safe and do not need to be cycled. Higher doses need to be cycled. If you're over about 30 or 40 milligrams of methylene blue a day, I do recommend cycling your methylene blue, at least taking days off during the week when you're not using it. But in essence, methylene blue, cordycepin stack is one of my favorites as far as supplements that are gonna help somebody right now while they're on the longer path of optimizing their health. And that's the key, everybody. The key is that optimizing our health takes a while. Vitamins, minerals, nutrients, cofactors, supplementing all that, diet, lifestyle, behavior, stress, sleep, all extremely important. That's the stuff that's going to work long-term. Methylene blue and cordycepin can help you get there. And you can modulate their use over time, meaning you can use less as you don't need them as much. But in essence, most of us need the support at least some of the time. Is there such a thing as too much energy? I took methylene blue, CoQ10, and cordyceps and felt like my brain was vibrating. <laughs> so yes, of course there is something called too much energy. This is when your brain just feels like it's overstimulated and you can't actually concentrate. You can't do the, do the work you wanted to do. You feel just jittery overall. You wanna modulate this, right? That's why when we talk about stacking biohackers out there, stack slowly. Start with methylene blue, then add CoQ10, then add NAD or cordyceps and things like that. But don't do it all at the same time, okay? And be aware that when you're starting something, it may be different when you add something else onto it as far as how it makes you feel. And so there might be a synergistic effect. There might be a detrimental effect depending on the situation. So you have to be mindful of what you're stacking together. But in essence, yes, there's of course too much energy. When I take too much blue canatine, which is one of the products that we have at Transcriptions, with methylene blue, CBD, nicotine, and caffeine, if I take too much of that, it's too much of the brain, too much. I feel overstimulated. But if I take a quarter or a half, I feel fantastic. My mind is racing in a positive way. I can do what I need to do. My mind is focused. I'm productive. I can get done what I need to get done. For three to five hours, it's just like fantastic. But too much of that's not going to have a positive effect. It's going to have a negative effect. So like anything else, you can over-energize your brain. And so be aware of that. Stack slowly. Stack intentionally. I heard you're supposed to cycle stacks, like off days. What's the deal with that? So the foundational supplements that you're taking, based on what you've tested and you need, you do not have to stack those. But things like adaptogens, other things that you're taking on a regular basis, it is better to cycle these things over time. And that's because the body 
has a better effect as a more natural response to them when you've taken them off for periods of time and then started them again. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Don't Look Up, where we ask you to look up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. We read every single comment every single time. And if you have any other topics that you're interested in, we are clinicians at Transcriptions. We care about optimizing health. We have great products and we use them all the time, but we wanna hear from you. What do you have questions about? Do you have questions about certain topics, science, controversies, you name it, we're here for you.